Ang bagong crush ng bayan, Deputy Speaker Marcoleta, kayo na po ang magpapaliwan. Pagkatapos na kayo ay sagutin ng Estado at gawara ng ABS-CBN ng prangkisa noong 1995, bakit naman ganito ang pagtrato nila sa gobyerno? Halos ayaw na nilang magbayad ng buwis. Ito ba ang in the service of the Filipino? O in the service of the Filipino? Unfair labor practice. The proceedings eloquently bear it all. ABS-CBN violated the rights of its own workers. It has denied them their just share in production as required by the Constitution. It committed unfair labor practices that consistently denied its employees security of tenure and benefits that come with regular employment. Ang turing pa naman nila sa kapamilya, ay kapamilya nila ang mga ito. Ito po ba ang pinatunayan? Ito po ang pinatunayan sa pagdinig ng mga taong naghayag ng hinanakit na naglingkod sa kanila ng tapat sa mahabang panahon. Napatunayan din natin na sadyang nililito ng ABS-CBN ang, pu ang publiko nang sabihin nito na lampas sa 11,000 ang mga empleyado nito nang masusing tingnan ang mga papeles galing sa mga hensa ng ating pamahalan tulad ng BIR, PhilHealth, SSS, Home Development Fund at Employment Compensation Commission. Ang regular na manggagawa ng ABS-CBN ay halos ikatlong bahagi lamang. At ang karamihan ay tinrato na independent contractors, talents, project workers at contractuals kahit pang regular na empleyo ang kanilang normal na gawain. Ipinagmalaki ng ABS-CBN ang halos labing apat na benepisyo na tinatanggap ng kanilang talents, project workers or contractuals. Pero ang pinakamabuti, ang pinakamahalagang benepisyo, ang pagiging regular ay tahasan naman nilang ipinagkait sa kanila. It was established that ABS-CBN, and contrary to the endeared kapamilya treatment to its workers, showed a pattern of systemic denial from its deserving workers the benefit of regularization. Time and again, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the aggrieved workers who were deemed employees given the basic test that what they do is within the network's control as it is desirable and necessary to the business of ABS-CBN. How can ABS-CBN reconcile the fact that people serve it for 10, 15, and even 20 years and still claim that they are not performing work necessary and desirable to its business. Paano po sila mamamalagi ng ganong katagal kung hindi naman kailangan ng kanilang paglilingkod? Isn't it that their length of service alone speak much of their loyalty, their competence, and their adherence to the kapamilya sense of belonging? Ibinabato ba ito na lang Ba ninyo kung saan-saan ang kapakanan ng inyong mga kawani? Gaya po ng sinabi ko na, ABS-CBN should have led the example that charity begins at home. Total bilyon-bilyon naman ang kinikita ninyo taon-taon at bilyon-bilyon din naman ang natitipid sa pagbabayad ng buwis. Hindi pa ba ninyo kayang totohanin na maging kapamilya ninyo ang mga manggagawang ito alang-alang man lang sa katuwiran na nakasama ninyo sila at napakinabangan sa mahabang panahon. Ngayon, ginagamit na naman sila ng ABS-CBN sa dahilan para bigyan sila ng bagong prangkisa. Hindi lamang po sila. Pati ang mga kababayan nating pinasasaya nila. Kanina lang po ay nakita natin muli ang kanilang isa-isang paghibik na kung isasara ang ABS-CBN, mawawa na silang tagatangkilik, tagatulong, tagapagbigay ng pag-asa, tagapagbigay ng men, kapanalig nila sa bawat yugto ng kanilang buhay. Nakita po natin lahat yun. Pero ang palagi nating sinasabi, magagawa naman po yan ang ABS-CBN sapagkat yan ang pinakamalaki na broadcasting industry sa ating bansa. 
Magagawa naman niya yan sapagkat siya nantungkuli niya talaga kung bakit siya kumuha ng prangkisa. Pero mas lalo niyang magagawa, Mr. Chair, na sumunod sila sa batas habang ginagawa nila ang kanilang tungkulin. Sinabi ba nila sa kanilang mga taong binibigyan ng entertainment na dapat iwag silang singilin sapagkat ang prangkisang ibinigay natin sa kanila 25 years ago ay libre? Ang tawag nga natin free to air frequency. Ang ibig sabihin, hindi po kayo pwedeng magbenta ng black box pagkatapos eh, pasisingil nyo sa kanila. Sisingilin nyo sa kanila. Hindi kayo pwedeng mag, magbigay ng maraming channels para exclusive, para ilak ninyo, para maging encrypted. Sapagat kapag ka bumili sila ng pangkaraniwang digital receiver o black box, hindi nila mapapanood yun. Kailangan magbayad ang tao. Ganun po ba yung pinaliwanag nila nung ilounce nila ang TV Plus? Hindi po. May panlin lang. May pandaraya. Dapat sana bigay, binigay yun ng libre. 12 channels, lalong napasaya ang mga tao. Lalong gumanda ang prestigyo at ang imahe ng ABS-CBN. Sapagat walang siningil kahit isang kusing mula sa ating kababayan. Sapagat yun ang tungkulin nila sa kanilang prangkisa. Yun ang sinumpaan nila sa kanilang prangkisa. Pero kabaligtaran na nangyari. Pero ngayon, gagamitin nila ang mga taong bayan. Kabaligtaran na naman ang pinapaliwanan. Hindi ba't ABS-CBN naman ang unang dahilan kung bakit ang mga manggagawa ay naging kawawa? Dahil hanggang ngayon ay ibinabato-bato ba, lang nila ang kaparapatan ng kanilang manggagawa. Political bias and bias reporting. ABS-CBN has been biased in favor or against candidates during past elections is already common knowledge. Kahit paulit-ulit na itanggi ito, kahit magtago pa ito sa likod ng press freedom at doktrina ng fair comment, alam na natin ito. Ito ay wala ng bago. Kapag gusto ka ng ABS-CBN, bibigyan ka ng exposure sa pamamagitan ng interview, balita sa news, programs, at if feature ka sa mga entertainment shows. Kung ayaw ka, Tiyak na babatikusin ka, Aharap, hanapan ka ng butas, lalagyan ka ng islant o anggulo sa balita na sangkot ka at hindi ka bibigyan ng pagkakataon para sumagot o magpaliwanag. Kanina po yung mga ilang detalya ng kanilang pagbimeari sa mga ibang industriya ay binanggit na ni Congressman Defensor. Totoo po lahat yun. Nagagamit po ang lahat ng ito na plataforma para gumawa sila ng kanilang sariling mga opisyal sa gobyerno. Tutulungan nila para maproteksyonan ang kanilang mga industriya. Ibig sabihin, hindi po in the service of the Filipino. In the service of the Filipino ang mas tamang angkop. We heard some of our colleagues who ventilated their complaints. When asked, Mr. Carlo Katigba confirmed that their sentiments are valid and he publicly made a commitment that everyone will be accorded the chance to air their sides in his network. The offer obviously came too late in the day. It has been established and has become public knowledge that ABS-CBN aired the anti-Duterte and paid for former Senator Antonio Trillanes IV and ex that exploited children in partisan politics. And despite the fact that it happened on the last day of the election period, when candidate Duterte had no more chance to react or clear his name in the same media network, mabuti na lamang po at nag ng TRO ang korte sa petition ni Speaker Alan Cayetano na noon ay Vice President ni Pangulong Duterte. Ayan po yung mga slides para sa inyong kapakanan. But it is not the biased reporting and the negative campaign per se that is insidious. It is the use of ABS-CBN's network to influence the outcome of political exercise, not for public good, but for its narrow political end that will inure to the advancement of ABS-CBN's corporate interests. Political partisanship is contrary to the terms of its legislative franchise and in violation of the Omnibus Election Code. 
Uulitin ko po ang sinabi ko na sa umpisa pa ng pagdinig natin. Hindi na dapat maimpluensya ang mga mamamayan sa pakikialam ng ABS-CBN sa politika. If ABS-CBN wants to be in the service of the Filipino people, it should stop mixing up its economic objectives with the simple aspirations of the ordinary citizens. These two are different and pulse apart. At this point, please allow me to address the ABS-CBN's contention that possible denial of its franchise application is tantamount to violation of freedom of the press and of free speech. Kung tatagin, tatanggapin po natin ang misleading na argumentong ito, edi yun pa lang nakaraming aplikasyon para sa renewal ng, renewal ng franchise ng mga radio and television stations. Noon, ay dapat pala pinagbigyan na lang natin lahat, Mr. Chair. At hindi natin siguro sila inayawan. Kung yun po yung argumento lang. Pero hindi po eh. Kasi po kung tatanggapin natin yun ang argumento, ang prangkisa will become a matter of right. Hindi na po siya pribilehyo. Wala na tayong discretion, puro ministerial na lang. Pagka po dumating na sa Committee on Legislative Franchises, wala na po tayong option doon. Siguradong dapat po eh, ibigay natin. Sapagkat pag hindi natin ibinigay, sasabihin nila, oh, that is a violation of free speech. Hindi po ganun. That will be in direct violation of the mandate reposed by the Constitution to Congress as the guardian of this special privilege. Unable to repel the avalanche of evidence against the grant of a new franchise, ABS-CBN Corporation tries a new luck, a new tact. Very recently, they asked for prayers, words, and actions, and pleaded for help, saying that it's no longer about business for them, but about the kind of system and country and leadership we want. Ito po yung sinabi nila, quoted po ito sa social media and other platforms. But how can ABS-CBN manage to still reverse the tide of public opinion against it when their phalanx of lawyers and accountants prove inadequate to the evidence-based interpolations on the floor that expose their rules and ledger domain? The last two days of the hearing told it all. The defenses of ABS-CBN finally crumbled in, the tat in tatters and for all the people to see. The irony is ABS-CBN's appeal to flood, I will quote this again, to flood social media pages with positive stories about ABS-CBN. Apparently, the network, Mr. Chair, is the only one left to believe in the rectitude of its cause or the lack of it. Mr. Chair, maybe they are living in a parallel universe. It is like the proverbial ostrich that buried its head in the sun but exposed its whole body for all people to see. This is the pitiful state of a broadcasting company which believed that it was invincible for so long a time. And it is above the law. It is high time that the sovereignty of the airways be restored to the people the ones who will finally decide to whom and when to grant this special privilege called franchise. Mr. Chair, gusto ko pong pasalamatan bago ko magtapos si Enrique Hill at Lisa Soberano sa pagbati at pamanghik na ipinaabot nila sa aming mag-asawa. Naramdaman ko ang kanilang katapatan. Sana po ganun ang ABS-CBN. Sa kanilang dalawa, Alam ko na mauunawaan nila na ito po ay tawag lang ng tungkulin at inahangad ko ang higit na tagumpay para sa kanila sa mga darating na panahon. Let me end with a popular movie clip from an on-screen and off-screen hero that had captured the hearts of millions of Filipinos to sum up the comprehensive, impartial, and open proceedings implored by the Speaker of the House, Alan Peter Cayetano, in regard to the franchise application of ABS-CBN.
Yang sabi nga po ni PJ, Mr. Chair, kung uulitin ko lang, ABS-CBN, puno na ang salop. Dapat ka ng kalusin. Maraming salamat po.